Hi guys, Figures Rap Scallion here with a quick update to one of my older videos. So it was brought to my attention that uh, the older chip videos I have really are just going to be confusing to new users who have never used the Maker Pen before because it looks so much different. Uh, so I just wanted to make some quick updates to the old videos. I'm also going to be doing these in a format that's a little friendlier for the wiki where I'm just going to focus on one chip per video and then we're going to have advanced videos that show you how to put the chips together. Let's get started. So we're going to start today with a variable chip. And to get to it, we're going to open this palette over here. So to open the palette, you look at your maker pen, you press that button up there. And depending on what direction you're looking in, it'll spawn it in different spots. I like to move it a little further over than they have it. It just spawns it in your periphery so you know it's there. But I like it over there. That gives you a clear workspace. And you just turn to get whatever you need. So first, we need to get a variable chip. So that's going to be under Gadgets. So we go to Gadgets as these top menus here. And then you get these sub-menus under each top menu. So this one's under Math Chips. Make sure that's clicked if it's not automatically. And then we're going to pull up the variable chip. When I'm working with chips, I like to turn Snap on. What Snap does is when the object spawns, it's going to be uh, axis locked. So it's going to spawn straight up and down and look nice and neat. And if you do that on the same axis for all your chips, it comes out looking really neat. You don't have to do that. Um, I just like to. So let's take a closer look at this thing. To see sort of your sub options for any chip, you look at your maker pen, you press configure. You point it at the thing you want to take a closer look at, and you pull the trigger. Now the object's going to highlight, so you know that's what you're looking at. So if you're working on a lot of things and you can't remember what variable you clicked on, that's a good visual cue. And you'll see our menu over here has changed. Now we have R signal, G signal, B signal. That corresponds to red signal, green signal, blue signal. So these are the different fixed variables we can get out of this thing. Now in this menu, we can set them with these little up or down things here we can do positive or negative and we can also have a zero coming out of this thing if we need that in our setup uh, but let's say you want a really big number this is kind of inconvenient you don't want to press that a hundred times you just press this input thing right there and it's going to pull up a sub menu where you can input a larger integer then just press ok and there you go now it's 100 to get back to our main palette menu you just press that there and we're back to where we were so let's take a closer look at this and make sure everything we just did actually affected this. So in the configure menu, I changed all the variables. To check if that's actually what's going on, the wire tool is really useful instead of just going back into the menu. You just point at whatever node you're concerned with, and after a brief delay, it's going to give you a readout of what its current output is. So we're seeing that this is a constant output. So uh, I should talk about how the integers work in this uh, rec room setup real quick. That means every tenth of a second, this is going to output that integer once. So uh, rec room's chip system works on tenth of a second updates. So every tenth of a second, something happens. And we're going to be talking about that more in later videos, but you just should be aware of it to start with. So I want to demonstrate that real quick using one other chip. We're just going to use a combinator chip. And I'll be going over these in the next video. We're going to wire it in such a way that it stores its output. And then uh, one of my favorite chips as far as uh, diagnostics is the output chip. You'll be using this a lot. Let's get two in front of us. So let's take this output here. You can see we're getting a four. And that's constantly a four coming out of that variable. Now let's go ahead and hook it up to this combinator, which is uh, set up so that it will hold a variable. You can see we're getting a runaway number. So this thing just constantly outputs whatever variable you have in there. There's ways to get that to uh, output once, and we'll be going over that in later videos. But for now, that's the basics of the variable chip. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.